welcome to my knitting podcast. It's my second episode and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's so nice to have you here. And if you're new to this channel, well, welcome. My name is Anastasia. I'm uh, 28 years old and I'm filming this episode from my home in South East England. Um, this is already my second episode. Thank you so much to everybody who has watched the first episode. I was overwhelmed and so pleased uh, with how it has been received. I had lovely feedback from um, quite a lot of you um, via the comments uh, down below or also um, on private messages on Instagram and Ravelry. And yeah, I can just say thank you. Um, it has helped me a lot. Um, I will work on quite a few t uh, things that you have mentioned. So um, uh, yeah, I w you will see the improvements or not. Well, let's see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will make my best to make it um, better for you so you can enjoy it even more. Well, that's me. Um, shall we start with what I'm wearing? Um, so today I am wearing the Chianti top. Um, this has been designed by Luisa Puccini. She's an Italian uh, knitwear designer and um, that was her first garment that she designed. So it was her first time that she sized something and I have to say at least my size fit, fits perfectly. Um, uh, this one was a test knit, so last time I had only started with one of the front panels. In my last episode you maybe have saw, uh, seen a little triangle. Um, and now that's here, I've got my top finished. Uh, it was a very nice knit and um, yeah, let's talk a bit about the top. So basically it is a um, top with uh, two straps per shoulder, so two on this side, or two on the other side. And then on the back they cross and um, on the front panel you've got like a lace panel. Um, this lace panel has been inspired by the uh, wine yards in Tuscany. Uh, that's the region where the designer is from. And I have to say I really like it. It's a perfect summer wear. Um, the yarn that I've used for this one is the uh, Lithuanian linen. I bought that one at uh, Tribe Yarns in London. I ordered it, it was um, with me within I think two days, it was very quick. And uh, this Lithuanian linen um, has a length of two, 450 meters per 100 grams. And I just needed a little bit less than one skein. So it's a very affordable project if you're thinking about trying out linen and um, yeah I think you might maybe you might be able to do a size M as well with one skein but yeah size small was uh, no problem um, yeah this one is a light fingering or heavy uh, weight he heavy lace and I used three millimeters needles um, to knit this up the only thing I would do different next time if I do this top again um, there is an I-cord um, cast on, on the back and I used a smaller needle because if you've ever done an I-cord cast on you might know that some of the loops get uh, fairly big so I thought I'm going to use a smaller needle size. The only problem is now that this back um, I-cord is a tiny bit too um, tight so this is something I would change. Um, and I might have to readjust the straps as well because they're just a bit too long. Um, there's nothing wrong. It's not. It's not uh, like it's mentioned wrong in the pattern. No, don't worry. Uh, the pattern is perfectly. It's just that I chose a bit too long, and I think um, when you start wearing it, they give a bit um, more ease to it, so they get a bit longer. Um, yeah, that's the only thing. Um, other than that, I'm really pleased. I think uh, it's perfect for a summer day or maybe a summer evening. And even maybe later on you could maybe wear it with uh, maybe a nice cardigan, cardigan on top. So yeah, um, that's my first linen top. So uh, the next finished object that I want to show you is the Gefion sweater. It's uh, a another pattern um, by Vedis Jansdottir. And 
as you can see there's a very nice pattern at the yoke and uh, it has as well some color work on the bottom of the body and the sleeves um, I think this uh, yoke pattern has, fur has been uh, already seen in 1970 so it's not a new pattern but um, yeah I, I, I really like it and my boyfriend which is most important he likes it as well um, he wears it um, almost well I would say very frequently he doesn't even um, bother with uh, even wearing a t-shirt sometimes I think he just uh, puts it on for me it would be a bit too itchy but actually because he has worn it that much it has become quite soft and for that one I have used the Alaphos Lopi that I showed you in the last episode um, this is like the bulky weight yarn uh, it comes 100 grams come with 100 meters yarn so it's actually quite a thick and um, yeah I have uh, found this pattern in my dearly loved pattern book so um, this is called a knitting with Icelandic yarn if you want to um, dive into knitting with Icelandic yarn I can really recommend you getting this one and I'm saying that because I used it quite a lot of times I'm still using it from time to time um, this one comes with 65 patterns for women, men and children and I think there's even one pattern for a little dog in there so yeah perfect if you want to uh, try some stuff um, it comes with patterns for uh, sweaters and cardigans as well as for socks um, some headwear thing uh, yeah so uh, loads of different uh, things and at, on the first pages uh, it uh, describes really well um, how uh, people have knitted Icelandic sweaters or patterns for hundreds of years and how it has developed so um, yeah it's very interesting and a very good book um, you can get it in Icelandic or in English so uh, the English version you can even order it online I have bought it in a little tourist shop I think in Iceland um, but yeah I really love this book so yeah I will link uh, a I will link it down below so you can have a look at it um, what else to say um, I think um, I used 6mm uh, needles uh, for this one and 5mm needles for the ribbing so this is like my go-to needle size for um, Arla for Slopey and yeah that's it I think anything else to say? no <laughs> um, the next uh, finished object I want to show you again it's not something that I've knit in the last uh, couple of weeks between uh, filming my last episode and this episode but it's something that I have done this year and uh, this is the uh, Theta Reddest Socks so um, Theta Reddest Socks um, they are as well designed by Vedis Jon Stottir and uh, Theta Reddest is an Icelandic saying I wanna yeah an Icelandic saying I wanna say <laughs> an Icelandic uh, saying and it's a way of living as well so according to a study from the University of um, Iceland 50% uh, of the Icelanders actually live after the saying and the saying means something like um, everything will work out okay in the end and um, it's a way how they're being quite resilient so if they ever face with some difficulties they actually have a quite laid back attitude um, I have experienced that myself when I was living there um, yeah so uh, it's just the way they are and it's certainly something that I will try to implement a bit more in my life um, this these socks have been a um, gift for our anniversary in May and um, yeah it is a reminder for both of us to be a bit more relaxed because uh, we both work in the travel industry so we have been very well 
very hard affected by all of this which is going on at the moment and um, yeah we're just trying to keep our heads up and being positive and learn new skills and try to make the best out of it so yeah but um these socks are yeah they are knit out of lead lopi so lead lopi is uh, the other yarn that i've shown you in my last episode it's like an iron weight yarn um with a uh, hundred meters per 50 grams so if you wanted to um, imitate uh, Alaphos Lopi that I used for my uh, for this one for the Gefflin sweater, uh, you would take two strands of lead Lopi. Um, yeah, and yeah, they're they're nice to maybe wear in boots, um, in the winter time, um, or just at home on a cold day. Um, yeah. The, um, I, I think I've adjusted the pattern slightly. Uh, you will be able to see that. I, I'll, I'll try to find a link uh, to the website. So, uh, oh yeah, another thing. Uh, what I wanted to mention. So there is a website. Um, it's called uh, Lopi Design, and um, quite frequently actually they um, publish patterns as well for free. Um, so I was lucky enough. I found this one for free. Um, and yeah, I have to say I quite like them. They're quite cool, and uh, yeah, a good reminder to stay chilled and not freak out. <laughs> so uh, let's continue with the next one, and this is actually my work and project. Um, the next one I wanted to show it to you, but I can't. <laughs> And that is because it is a test knit that I'm doing for um, Lerke. Um, she is the uh, knitwear designer behind Fiber Tells, um, a lovely Danish girl. Um, and uh, she had a call for test knitters, so I signed up for that. And I am test knitting a summer top. That's all I really want to say now because she is about to publish her pattern within the next couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, obviously uh, I want her to um, publish it first and um, then I can show it to you next time. But um, what I can show you is the wool that I'm using. So, uh, this is uh, non-nulsed wool. Uh, it is a organic and merino wool and um, well it's a blend between 70% organic merino wool and 30% organic cotton um, and this is such a great thing to knit with so um, it's a fingering weight yarn I want to say yeah 230 meters per 50 grams and uh, I do a bit of color work so I'm using um, some uh, leftovers that I had at home. So this is a West Yorkshire Spinners uh, four ply soft yarn and a little bit of a grey of um, my Mama Knits uh, that's a sock yarn as well. But um, yeah, just to come back to that. So um, the cotton um, blend, cotton merino blend is just such a perfect uh, yarn to knit with um, to do uh, summer tops. So I had this one gifted by the sister of my boyfriend. Thank you very much. Um, we bought that one at the uh, Yak store in Brighton. A very, very nice uh, yarn store, I have to say. Uh, we went there and um, yeah, they were very kind and friendly and we loved the experience there. And the uh, yarn is super. So. In the next episode I will be able to show you most probably the finished top because I'm quite far in with it. Um, but if you're curious uh, what I'm knitting on, uh, you can have a look at um, yeah, Fiber Tell's uh, podcast. She will publish the pattern within the next week. Uh, so the next one that I'm doing is uh, the lovely Amaruk uh, sweater from uh, Loparefu. Um, she's called uh, Anna Winters, Anna Sophia Wintersol, and uh, she lives in Norway. And she does um, Icelandic-inspired knitwear. 
designs um, and it is a, she, she has beautiful beautiful patterns so if you want to have a look at her account I will uh, link it down below as well but um, yeah so uh, I just started with the cuffs of the arms and um, you might see it's very very colorful I hope the colors will show well on the camera um, I used quite a lot of stuff that I had in my stash and luckily like the I had quite a lot of different colors um, from the Let Lopi so again I'm using that Let Lopi um, this um, yeah uh, 100 meters per 50 grams and uh, the main color is the uh, mimosa color so um, that's the same one that I used for the color work on my last uh, sweater that I showed you in the last episode um, yeah that's uh, pretty much all I can say maybe one more thing it's a um, it's not knit the traditional way so once I have finished uh, the pattern I can actually show you what it looks like but um, yeah I'm looking forward to um, getting really uh, diving into this one I haven't been able to knit that much on this one and this is mainly because one reason I had uh, like a quite a pain in my right arm from knitting, knitting that much so um, yeah I wasn't able to knit really that much during the last weeks and um, yeah that's the main reason why I, I haven't progressed that much but um, yeah this is my next uh, project that I'm, I'm diving into and I'm focusing on. Um, my last uh, working project that I can show you is a crochet project and this is like an amigurumi um, crochet uh, project that I'm doing so this is gonna be a little aeroplane as you can see <laughs> it's not much yet from an aeroplane I started a I have started a few wings as well, so uh, you have to do four wings for... I will show you a little uh, video of one that I have uh, finished before. Um, this one is uh, after a pattern from uh, Melissa's Crochet Patterns. And um, sh she does it a bit different, but I um, adjusted it bit because I want to insert a little music box to make make it a lullaby. Uh, I've done it twice already and um, I think it's a very nice gift for newborn babies. So uh, yeah, uh, I will be able to show you that one finished probably on pictures because by the time I have finished it I will send it straight uh, to uh, yeah the little baby which is expected at the beginning of August so I better get a wheel on there. Um, and uh, one last thing that I want to say about um, this project is I'm using a, a Stylecraft, what is it, a Stylecraft Chunky uh, yarn um, that is approximately 144 meters per, I don't want to lie, must be 100 grams, huh? It doesn't say on it. Oh yeah, of course it says 100 grams. Uh, yeah, 144 meters. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of acrylic yarn, and uh, I only ever really use it um, for little toys. Um, but for the toys, it works out very, very well, and it makes it washable. And if there's any, well, if there's ever a little accident with a little baby if it pees on it or uh, you know what then uh, yeah it, it, you can just uh, wash it and um, I always make sure that the little um, music boxes that I insert that they're washable as well so uh, yeah it is uh, very good to think about this sort of stuff when you make um, yeah things for babies um, I don't want to say it's a toy and I don't know how you do it when you um, do um, things for babies because um, I don't want to ever be blamed for something to the baby to happen so um, I um, always say it's not a toy and it's just a lullaby that you can 
play when the baby is there but um, yeah how do you do it when you do um, little gifts for babies um, what do you do you make sure that you um, use certain products or a certain quality of yarn um, would be nice to know how you handle this and um, we're coming to my acquisitions so um, this month I have not bought any yarn well I've got this yarn as a gift so does that count and beside of that I haven't bought any yarn which I'm quite pleased about because the one thing that I bought for knitting though is I bought um, plastic boxes so I bought plastic boxes in different sizes um, to finally find a good way to store my yarn and that's, this is a mainly because I was so scared of um, ever getting uh, moths in my yarn so um, I made sure I put I've put like some lavender um, papers in there to um, make them smell a bit um, like lavender so I bought this one just in the supermarket and I have a few like bags as well of um, dried lavender that I just put between my wool um, if you have any good tips on how to store yarn to make it make sure to make sure that um, there's never ever gonna be a moth in there uh, please let me know I would be heartbroken if they would get into my wool and I know it's quite hard to like get rid of them so yeah um, I've got uh, these boxes and I have to say um, all in all I've got quite a lot of yarn um, well I thought I had a lot of yarn um, and I will show you a video of all my yarn um, and I kind of want to knit more out of it and just like not get rid of it but I just want to use it up because I feel it's a shame that I have such nice yarn sitting in um, the cupboard just waiting there um, and yeah I'm, I think I'm not a yarn hoarder I think uh, the best way to describe it is I usually tend to buy yarn for a new project but I'm not the kind of person who just goes out and buys random yarn that I don't know what I'm going to use of. Um, I, I have a few balls of yarn that I, use, that I bought when I started knitting um, that I don't know what I'm going to make out of it but yeah mostly I have to say um, it's stuff it's mainly Icelandic yarn and then I've got a bit of like um, yeah yarn that I have bought uh, previously but I'm trying to uh, use it up and uh, make stuff out of it um, that I can wear or that are good for gifts. And that leads me to my next uh, topic and uh, this is uh, my inspiration. So um, this time I haven't spent much time like really online and I haven't really had a look into new patterns because I had um, quite a lot of things that I'm working on at the moment so um, the only thing that I can show you this week or this episode is a um, an Instagram account that I really really like and it's something um, I have discovered I don't know how uh, it is called um, getting married in a sweater and it's uh, Ray. Um, she uh, was supposed to be getting married this year and she, uh, they had to postpone the wedding but she is actually knitting her wedding dress and I find this like mind-blowing. So on her account she really shows you the details about how she planned it out and um, how she decided on the lace and stuff so it's uh, super interesting I think and uh, certainly something that uh, yeah stands out in all of these fiber arts so um, yeah I think she also had a um, an interview with uh, Kirsty Glasnitz so um, yeah I will see if I can find it and uh, link it down below as well 
And then uh, talking about uh, that um, leads me to the highlights of my last weeks. And my biggest highlight was actually I, that I uh, traveled home and went to see my family in Germany. I uh, saw my mother in the beginning of March because we just went on holidays before everything closed uh, down. And um, yeah, the rest of the family, I think I haven't, s I think I last saw them in February. So it was so nice to go back. Usually I go back maybe every four to six weeks um, just to see them. And um, yeah, I miss them dearly. So it was so nice to see them and spend time with them. I also saw a few friends. Um, and uh, this time I took the ferry. Um, just because I thought it, it might be easier to have a car down in Germany and I actually quite like to drive as well so um, I drive down to Dover, take the ferry um, it gives me a bit of time to relax and uh, I think it's like a two hours um, drive <laughs> is that what you say on a ferry? Uh, so it's a it takes two hours to get to uh, Dunkirk in um, France and then it takes me another I think four hours to get home so door to door I think I spent nine hours which isn't that bad I mean the flight would be much shorter but the thing is I would have to leave earlier the house um, to then park up my car um, to get to the airport, spend time and at the moment everything is taking quite long at the airport so I thought I might as well drive and uh, it was a good decision. I had quite a nice time driving, I was listening to podcasts, I was able to phone a few friends that I haven't talked to for a long time and um, yeah, it was definitely um, the, the, the highlight of uh, the last uh, weeks. Um, the other thing is um, I'm going back to work tomorrow so um, this is my last day off and uh, I'm really looking forward to going back to work. It's uh, quite weird, I haven't been working for such a long time but that said, um, well I haven't been working in my primary job but um, I picked up a job in a supermarket so I've been working there I think for I think two and a half months or something I worked in a supermarket whilst um, everything was going so crazy so the only thing that I might be a bit sad about is that I will have a bit less time to knit but uh, that's a good trade-in um, to being able to actually go back to work so I'm quite happy about that and I think that's it for this episode thank you so much for watching and I thank you so much for the feedback that you gave me for my last episode um, I appreciate that you take the time to comment and um, subscribe this channel. Uh, it's great to see that um, yeah, I can actually show you some stuff and inspire you. A lot of you have said that you liked um, the part about the Icelandic yarn, so I'm going to make sure to include a bit more about that. So if you want to see a bit more about what I'm um, working on, you can uh, always follow me on Instagram. Um, my account is called Free Your Sheep, and um, I, it's the same name as on Ravelry. So on Ravelry, I'm called uh, Free Your Sheep as well. If you don't know what Ravelry is, Ravelry is a sort of a platform for knitters, crochets, and spinners, and um, it's perfect if you want to um, find new patterns, if you're searching for specific patterns. Um, you can just um, buy them there, download them, put them in your library and um, yeah, I use it yeah, almost daily I want to say because there's also quite a lot of um, groups on there, there's groups, chat, chats uh, that you can um, yeah, participate in and um, you can keep in touch with your five friends. Yeah, so if you want to see a bit more, I have, I'm being quite um, good with like putting stuff in my stash, putting um, information on my pattern page, um, what I'm using, especially now with the more recent projects I've been very um, good with that. 
So thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure um, to have you here. Um, if you want, you can always uh, like this video, comment down below, and um, best would be if you could um, subscribe this channel. And there's a little um, bell as well, so that makes sure that you don't miss the next episode. Um, it will probably take another couple of weeks again um, to publish the next one. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have you here. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.